Step one, make a bowl game. Step two, contend in the Sun Belt. Will ODU take that next step? It's Locked On Sun Belt. You are Locked On Sun Belt, your daily podcast on the Sun Belt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sun Belt, your team every day. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more as the playoffs have winded down. The sports stop sporting like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. All right, so we're uh, T-minus one day before the Sun Belt Media Days. We've been doing a lot of these previews. Let's preview uh, the Old Dominion Monarchs. You know, when I ask who will make the adjustments, we're going to talk about ODU or the opposition. And, of course, we'll go over the 2024 expectations. Last year for ODU was was a roller coaster. It, it had some highs. It had not that many lows, to be honest with you, uh, but certainly some uh, disappointments. They brought in a new offensive coordinator. They started lighting up the scoreboard, had a big win uh, against the Cajuns. They beat App State, probably should have beat Wake Forest, uh, couldn't get off the field against Marshall. It was uh, certainly fun, and it certainly was not boring. Uh, and to get to a bowl game, Grant Wilson does a QB draw on the last play from scrimmage and uh, muscles his way in there. Uh, they do lose a tough bowl game. They had a big lead over Western Kentucky, and they let that slip away. So maybe a little bit of a sour taste in their mouth after the season or to wrap up the season, which is really uh, unfortunate because it was really a thrilling season. Remember last year, ODU's over under, or their, their win total was like one and a half. And some people had, what I was reading, they weren't going to win a game. <laughs> they were, you'd be, you know, if you could get, yeah, take the under is what people were saying. Uh, and they won six ball games, uh, you know, including the Cajuns, including App State. Like I said, you know, had every chance to beat JMU and uh, could not pull that one off. There was another ball game. Let me see if I can find the schedule from last year where oh, I was coastal Carolina. They could, they could have beaten JMU and they could have beaten coastal Carolina. Uh, and all of a sudden now you're looking at, at eight and four and you're looking at a, a contending team in the, in the East. So um, you do have some guys to replace. And unfortunately they did lose some players in the portal. Uh, Kadarius Calloway, on 24-7 sports, listed as a four-star. He went uh, to Cal. You have a linebacker, Wayne Matthews the third, uh, four-star. He went to Michigan State. Um, you do have highly rated three-star, Taj Rael, uh, safety. He is at uh, Memphis. Um, another highly rated three-star, Sean uh, Asbury the second, going to IU. So, they did lose some players. They did replace. They got about 16 transfers, about 16 transfers, uh, according to uh, 24-7. So they will have to uh, work them in. Doesn't seem to be as highly rated as the guys who left, but uh, uh, it is what it is. The outgoing transfers said they lost 32 players, but we went over the uh, highly rated ones. And they are going to have to figure that out. Now, when we had Ricky Ronnie on uh, earlier this year, the head coach, he talked about, you know, in year two with the offense that they brought in from Fordham is really where the quarterback shines. He has more confidence in it. The wide receivers have more confidence in it, uh, more trusting of the quarterback. And we'll see if it takes it to that next level. Cause that's really where they kind of, you know, fell off JMU. They couldn't put up any points in the fourth quarter against Coastal Carolina, couldn't put up any points in the fourth quarter. Even in the Cajuns game where they won, right, that game ended on a goal line stand because they stopped scoring. The Cajuns finally got a stop, <laughs> you know, and they stopped scoring. And so the defense had to step up in that one. So can this team be even more explosive? And actually looking at the rundown there, you know, who's going to make the adjustments is, is because now – everyone's got film on what ODU is trying to do. I mean, I think you got film, you know, after game one, but now I think at a year of that, 
uh, and we'll see what Ricky Ronnie can do. You would think you'd be able to run out of that really well because everyone is paranoid about covering the wide receivers. Cajuns has all kinds of issues uh, communicating back and forth, looking at each other while the plays were being snapped and just getting run by and, you know, bands playing as ODU is scoring touchdown after touchdown. And if you're concerned too much with the pass because you don't want to give up a 50 yard pass, well, all of a sudden it's much easier to get a five or six yard gain over and over and over again. And they go fast. They're explosive and they go fast. And Grant Wilson was rather inexperienced, right? He was the, he was the Fordham quarterback backup <laughs> when he transferred in. He wasn't the, the record setting Fordham quarterback. He was the backup to the Fordham quarterback. So he got a lot of experience last year, but um, can he take it to that next level and be able to finish you know, when we talk about making the adjustments is when those other, when the defenses finally adjust to what they're doing third quarter and fourth quarter um, and, and be able to put points up on the board when uh, they need it. Cause a couple of points again against JMU and against coastal Carolina. And is that the difference between a, maybe some guys sticking around, I don't know what their NIL money situation was. We talked about some guys going to some big uh, power four schools in Memphis. Uh, but all of a sudden now you're a contender, right? You're finishing right behind, you know, uh, JMU. And, and maybe you're right there with App State. Let's find that out. Well, you know, now that I think about it, let's find out what was the 2023, you know, Sundall standings. And if, you know... <laughs> You switch a couple of ball games in there. Let's see her old dominion was five and three, right? <laughs> They're in the championship ball game. If they beat JMU and coastal, they're playing in the championship game. And maybe that changes what the outlook would be for this season. All right. All right. So let's take a time out. We'll come back. We'll talk more about uh, making those adjustments uh, and the 2024 uh, expectations uh, and go over some of the depth chart here uh, for Ricky Ronnie's ODU uh, Monarchs. But first, let me tell you about FanDuel. I love sports. I love them so much. I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games and the sports aren't sporting like we want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sporting going whenever I want. All I have to do is open up the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. All right, Dave Schultz, Lockdown Sunbelt, your team every day. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, all We are up to 1330. So maybe we'll, we'll get to 1350. Maybe we'll get to 1400 by the time uh, the, the season starts. I still have a lofty goal. We had a big bump around media days. Of course, I was at media days. Uh, we had a big bump around that. Maybe we'll get another bump here uh, at the end of uh, July. I'll try to react to media days because uh, they are Tuesday and Wednesday. I will not be there. Uh, we'll see what comes out of them uh, during the week, and we'll recap. Uh, all right, it is uh, we're previewing ODU coming off a six and seven season. Uh, again, making a bowl game on the last play of scrimmage with Ricky Roddy's wife jumping into his arms. I love that stuff. That pure, unadulterated uh, joy. Uh, uh, and it's not about contracts. It's not about NIL. It's not about the transfer portal. It's just we won this football game. Um, and I guess, there, you know, is there a difference between, I like to say this on the radio, I say it on YouTube, there's a difference between being uh, gutsy and ballsy. And uh, we saw it a couple of times last year, right? Uh, Georgia Southern with a QB draw uh, over, maybe that was a couple of years ago. Uh, it was a couple of years ago uh, when Kyle Van Trees did the uh, draw. We were, everyone was watching that game and you saw the linebacker leave with the running back. So we kind of knew what was coming. Uh, we just saw the highlight of the Grant Wilson one, but still a fantastic finish. Um, and as we mentioned in the open, in the first segment, that the offense becomes a little bit more consistent and maybe at the same time more explosive. 
but maybe there's different reads that Grant can make and see. And I don't know if there's so much deception, right? There wasn't a whole lot of deception with what they did. I go, because I, I watched that game with the cages. They just got the playoff sooner. And then nobody was covering wide receivers down the field because they had two or three steps and pff, gone. So I'm not sure how much deception there is. What you'd like, and this actually bothered me a little bit um, under Billy Napier, the Cajuns would come out and throw the ball instead of just running the ball, their strength, because I happen to think Billy Napier was overthinking it, that um, they're going to try and stop the run, so let's pass. Let's just run the football, <laughs> and, and that will open up the pass later on. Here we will see if they run the football a little bit to try and suck them in, maybe just a little, because I'm I, I love the up tempo offense. I love we're going downfield, try to stop us. <sighs> the only problem is if you do get stopped, you go too fast, and you do get stopped, then that defense can get tired pretty quickly. Um, now the teams have seen it, and so we'll see if they adjust to what ODU was doing last year. Um, you know, we said they, they came up with a couple of, of tough losses, but they also came up with a couple of clutch wins. We said uh, the last one um, was against Georgia State, the QB draw against Georgia State. But they also beat Georgia Southern in Statesboro, 20 to 17, right? I mean, this team was, you know, this team was kind of looking at a five-game losing streak in the face. They had lost to James Madison 30-27. They lost to Coastal Carolina 28-24, both very winnable ball games. You get blown out by Liberty 30 to 8, uh, 30 to 10, or 38 to 10. But then you, you come away with a victory 20 to 17 from Georgia Southern, and now you have a chance to go bowling, and you got to be Georgia State at home. And we talked about the thrilling uh, win. So that's a good coaching job by Ricky Ronnie. That really is, because you could, you know, you're coming off a big win again on the road against Southern Miss. You're coming off a bigger win at home against App State. You have a chance to beat James Madison in Harrisonburg. They were ranked at the time. Probably should have beaten them, but certainly could have beaten them. You probably should have beaten Coastal Carolina at home. Uh, and then you take one on the chin against what is a good Liberty team. I mean, you could lose the team right then and there. But they beat Georgia Southern, and they beat Georgia State uh, to go to a bowl game. And again, you know, coaches, as disappointing as that is, um, to lose that game, you know, a lot of times in, you, you they win these games and you get blowout wins and you don't know where to go, right? There's, you can't can't yell at the players uh, if they're blowing the team out. You come away with a bowl game, uh, certainly that's the goal. Everyone wants to win. But hashtag, there's always a bright side. Now Ricky Ronnie could say, you know, we just didn't finish. We had a chance. Not a had a chance. Should have finished. What was, I mean, they lost 38-35 uh, in OT. And they were, they, I mean, they got shut out in the second half, right? They were winning 35 to 14. It may have been 35, I was 35, 14, 35, 14, and they could not score in the second half. So that's where uh, that, that will leave a bitter taste in your mouth. He does, he will not need to motivate anybody uh, for the season to work harder. Who's coming back. All right, let's quickly check out the, uh, Depth chart from our lads. This was done May 22nd. And they do have quite a few um, transfers in the two deep. Three, seven. Uh, the whole defensive backfield is transfers. Patrick Smith Young, strong safety. Jerron Manning, free safety. Right cornerback, Angelo Rankin Jr. You have the nickelback, so Will Jones is second. I guess uh, Rashid Reason uh, is the returner. He's the left cornerback, so goodness, that's four out of five. But you have seven on offense, and you have um, 11, 12, 13 players, 13 transfers in the two deep. Um, we'll see how that works out. Offensive line, four out of five are back. Zach Barlov uh, is the center, so that's a, a key position, transfer in. Deontay Vines, a wide receiver, a redshirt senior transfer. And the running back, Aaron Young, um, has uh, was trying to replace Callaway, and that is certainly a, uh, 
a tough chore ahead. All right, let's take one more time out. Well, defensively, let's quickly go back to defensively. Uh, always said the defensive backfield, uh, they are returning a lot of guys up front. Uh, and so that's good news. Uh, the defensive line is all uh, returning players. Um, and the linebackers are all returning players. So that's up front. They're all they're all back. Um, four out of the five defensive backs are uh, four out of the five defensive backs are transfers. All right. So what are the expectations? They were almost nil last year, as we mentioned, like one and a half wins was the win total. It's a little bit better this year, but is ODU maybe a little bit under the radar? We'll talk about that when we come back after this. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Again, special thanks to everybody continuing to subscribe. Uh, it has been a little bit of a, well, move. I've, I, I've moved into to Louisville, Kentucky, uh, starting to work for Jim Beam, and uh, that starts today. So it has been a little bit of a process uh, to get going again, but I appreciate everybody uh, hanging in there with me. We will continue to do the ideas. We're going to continue to do this, continue to grow it. Uh, we'll uh, try to recap as much of the media days uh, as I can, see who said what. I'm sure it'll be going all day long on social media, and I will not be in a place where <laughs> I will be able to see social media um, on Tuesday, although I I think I do have Wednesday off. So I do appreciate it. Um, hopefully we'll goal is still 1500 or, you know, by August 31st, I think we can do it. I think we'll get a nice bounce from media days. And as the season is progressing and hopefully I can get some of these coaches on that, you know, I'm not getting at media days because, well, I'm not there. We'll see if they want to make time for me moving forward. So special thanks to everybody. Uh, also uh, don't forget locked on sec with my guy, uh, Chris Gordy. That is, I mean, it's going to be like every week in the SEC is going to be something special. So don't forget to check out Chris Gordy and Locked On SEC. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Let's check out what are the expectations. The over-under is four and a half. Now, the schedule is not easy, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um if you want to be generous, again, we take home games much more serious, even if they are good teams. Road games are tough. So they're at South Carolina. We'll say 0-1. Not necessarily, but it could be 0-1. East Carolina at home, got to beat that game. Got to win that ball game. Virginia Tech, Virginia Tech is coming to Norfolk. Is that going to be set up for a huge ball game? That's a huge opportunity for Ricky Ryan. I can't predict a win right now. We'll see what happens. Uh, but that is huge. But let's say they start out one and two. They got to beat Bowling Green. That's on the road. That's not going to be easy. That's two and two. Then you're at Coastal Carolina. You're going to be underdog there. We'll say two and three. You're at Georgia State. Not going to be easy. We'll say two and four. Texas State at home. Can you pull off an upset against Texas State at home? We'll give them the benefit of the doubt. That's three and four. Versus Georgia Southern. You know they're going to be out for blood. But it's... It's in Norfolk, so it's four and four. At App State, we'll give App State uh, the win there. That's four and five. Jam you at home. All right, five and five. That's going to be tough. Versus Marshall at home, you got to do that one. That's six and five. And at Arkansas State, probably uh, Arkansas State will be favored in that one. So make it six and six. So what are the games that, you know, I mean, you got – Two power five games, two power four games, as the case may be. South Carolina in the first three. And then you get East Carolina sandwiched in between. So you're at South Carolina. I mean, could they surprise South Carolina? Could they pull off a little bit of what would be a major upset? I got to believe that's got to be double digits. Then they're home against East Carolina and then Virginia Tech. God forbid they start out 3-0 and and are ranked. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but what are the games, you know, can you can – you, beat a Coastal Carolina or a Georgia State on the road? Can you beat a Texas State at home? All right. App State on the road is going to be tough. All right. App State is going to be tough on the road. All right. Do you take, do you beat James Madison at home? You know, and do, do you win a couple of games that you're you're not supposed to, or do you lose a couple of games 
that you're not supposed to. I think ODU is favored against the Cajuns. If I don't if I remember, I'm not sure they were favored against App State. Um, but again, I'm a big believer. You guys know this, you know, winning on the road in college football is hard. So even if the other team is better, you know, when you're at home, it's just it's not necessarily exponentially, but it is a lot easier to win uh, at home. Um, I see six, I see six potential wins, but that's, you know, is that a James, that's a win against James Madison. That's a win against Georgia Southern. And that's a win against Texas state that by the way, that is an outstanding home schedule for ODU. They get East Carolina, Virginia tech, Texas state, Georgia Southern. That's four. James Madison is five and Marshall is six. Is that the best home schedule? In the Sun Belt, <laughs> uh, and not an easy schedule by any stretch of the imagination. So the expectations are for ODU to not have a winning season. They're going they're going to have to beat somebody that they're not expected to. What I'm saying about that home and road game is that they may be favored against JMU, depending on their record. Right? I can't imagine they're going to be favored against Virginia Tech, but you go two and zero. Oh, you beat South Carolina, you beat East Carolina, you'll be favored against Virginia Tech. It may not be a whole lot, but you'll be favored. You go to South Carolina and win and beat East Carolina at home, I don't care if both are one-point victories on Hail Marys, although that may have something to do with the line. Uh, if they are 2-0 hosting Virginia Tech, it's a good bet they're going to be – they'll be favored. Although, let's see what – who does Virginia Tech have? I guess that that may make a difference too, Mo. Well, I thought you can, a lot of times you can click on it. You can't. So um, I, I do think they'll go bowling again. If they beat some teams, they're not supposed to beat. You don't, you go on the road and you beat an app state, you know, um, I'm giving them the Texas state win, right? That's, huh. you know, you go on the road, you beat coastal Carolina, right. go on the road, beat Georgia state. You know, if you beat a couple of these guys, again, they were not that far off as they lost. They went six and seven, right? Overall, they went six and six in the regular season. And could I say they're two or three plays away from being eight and four? And in the Sun Belt Championship ballgame. So I think ODU may be one of those teams that's under the radar. I know Phil Steele kind of, I mean, they picked, he picked Marshall to finish second in the East. But maybe ODU is just a little bit under the radar uh, because of the way they finished last year. A couple of close wins and then a really heartbreaking loss getting shut out in the second half. Um, they were under the radar last year. They could be under the radar this year because not a whole lot are liking Coastal Carolina. Only um, Georgia State is four and a half. Old Dominion is four and a half. Southern Miss is four and a half. Monroe is one and a half. Uh, so those are the win totals. Nobody is at two and a half or three and a half. So there's not a lot of people having a lot of faith in ODU right now. I think they'll go bowling. I'm not sure they're going to get those wins that they're not supposed to. Uh, the thing is, they got to win those games at home. If you don't, if you don't, if you're not beating the tough games at home, then you got to beat them on. Then you got to go on the road and do it or else you could have a tough season. So if you win the games at home, that alleviates the pressure to do it on the road. But again, start off hot. Who knows where the confidence goes? It's got to be, again, the best. I mean, Texas, what did I say? Texas State, JMU, Georgia Southern, Virginia Tech, East Carolina, and the last one's Marshall. That may be the best home schedule in the, in, in the Sun Belt. That's, that's outstanding. That's outstanding. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I'm sure everyone will um, get to see the Sunbelt Media Days. Looking forward to our buddy Matt Stewart and Rocky Boyman's coverage. That's what I'll be tuning into when I get a chance to do so. Um, I will be able to watch it live on Wednesday um, as it's happening. So uh, do appreciate it. Thanks so much for tuning in and subscribing. Again, 1,330 subscribers. It keeps on going up. Really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, have a great day, and we will be back again on Tuesday with another edition of Lockdown Sunbelt, your team, every day.